Hi, my name is Phil. I'm a ceramic artist based in Bristol, which means I work with clay. And today I'm going to show you how to make some pot friends. I'm going to make this tea monster today. Um, and it's a pot so you can store your things in it. And I'll make a couple more. I've made a cat like this with some ears and a portrait of a friend of mine too. So you can get very creative with these. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so these are the things you're going to need to go with your clay to make your pot friend. You need some paints to paint it once it's dry, a fork, some paint brushes if you've got them, a pencil, a small piece of newspaper, a mug or something round that you can um, use to cut around, and a rolling pin if you've got one. So you want to unwrap the clay. Put the bag to one side. Take a small piece of clay from the main lump, say around like a, a ping pong ball size, and put the clay back in the bag. Stop it from drying out. You want to roll the clay in your hands to create a ball. Just roll it round and round in your palms. Once you've got a ball shape, kind of, I don't know if you're perfect, but ball-ish and then you can pop it on a newspaper and what you want to do is squish it down with your palm so it becomes a bit flat pick it up turn it over and squash it again and if you've got the rolling pin then you can start to roll it out if you roll it out one way and then pick it up turn it round roll it the other way Pick it up, turn it around again, just rotate it a little each time so you keep it circular. And then one more time. Be really careful when you're picking it up because it could tear. And you want it to be sort of about half a centimetre thick. And if you grab your mug, you can put it on in the middle. Push it down gently but not, not all the way through. And you can use your pencil to cut around. And if you cut a little line going away from the mug, you can then pick up the excess clay, pull it away, put that back into the big lump, take the mug off. It might stick a little to the mug, so just gently peel it off. And there you go, you put your base. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. Um, and then if you grab your fork, we're going to do a technique um, called scoring and sticking. So what we're going to do is use the fork and just score around the edge of the base, create little lines and that will just help the walls of the pot to stick. Then grab your main lump again, take another piece about the same sort of size, maybe a tiny bit bigger and this time you're going to want to make a sausage out of it. So. Roll it between your hands again, but start making a kind of sausage shape. Roll it a bit more. Keep it, try and keep it even. Then you want to get a surface that isn't, um, is quite white clean. And you want to start to roll it with both hands. Uh, so it gets bigger and bigger. You can squish it down a bit if it gets too sort of oblong and not round so it's not rolling very well. You start from the middle and just roll outwards until you get a, a long sort of snaky sausage. And if you bring your base back in, you can check whether it's long enough to go all the way around, which it is. So we can use our fork and just cut a little bit off. 
like that. And if we score the ends just a little bit, we can stick them together. And you should have a ring. And that's the beginning of your pot's uh, sides. Then to stick it to the base, you can score the ring. Put the two scored sides together and just gently with your fingers push down on both sides. Smooth the join together as well and keep pushing down. And pinch the wall in a little bit as well, make it a little bit taller. And if you gently lift it up, you'll see that you're starting to get a pot shape. So that's the bottom of the pot. And if you want to make the join on the the join on the inside a little bit smoother, you can take a little little bit of clay, the excess clay here from the ring, and make really small little worms. So very thin, small pieces, and you can put that on the inside and those worms will just fill the gap and make it a lot smoother so you won't see the join. And just keep forming it with your hands to keep the circle. And then you want to score the top again. And grab another lump of clay, maybe a little bit more, and make another sausage. And do this three or four times, maybe five times, depending on how tall you want your pot. And just keep scoring and sticking. Okay, so I'm about to add my last sausage to the pot and I've scored both sides and I'm just going to roll it around, pinch it off, smush it together and start to use my thumb just to go around and join the piece of clay to the main pot and you can just give it a squeeze, just use your thumb or your finger and just smooth everything And then once you've got to the right height that you want, um, just go over the whole pot again and just sort of use your finger and just smooth it a little bit more because it might be a bit rough. So you can do that at the end and just smooth it out till it looks like one piece. Also, once you've got your pot um, starting to be formed and you can Keep smoothing it, so spend a little bit of time smoothing it down with your fingers. You can let it dry a little bit just so it's a bit easier to handle, or you can keep it um, wet if uh, it's not too big. And you want to make sure you've left um, some clay as well. I've got quite a lot left, um, but if your pot's a bit bigger, you might not have so much left, but as long as you have some for the features of your pot friend. Okay, so once your pot's dried a little bit, you can pick it up and you can smooth it a tiny bit more with your finger and you can go around the bottom as well and smooth it with your thumb. And just let it dry out a little bit and then you can pick it up. Now, with the clay left over, I can do 
all my facial features and anything else that my pot friend might want. So with this pot I'm going to make them into a sea monster. So I thought what I might do first is make a lid for the pot. So I'll take another piece, it's about the same as I use for the base, roll it into a circle. And to a ball shape like that. Put it on the newspaper, squash it down, and roll it out. Now I've found my pot has got a little bit bigger than the base itself. So what I'm going to do is use a, a bigger mug to cut around. Or if you don't have another circular shape that's bigger, you can just roll it out and cut it by eye. And just make sure that it's big enough to go on top of the pot. But I, fa I found this mug is pretty good. And use the pencil again. Gently peel it off. Now I'm going to put that to the side just to dry out a bit before I start putting any more uh, features onto it. But I'm just going to check that it fits the pot quite well. Now pop that to one side, let it dry. And I'm going to want to start doing some facial features. Okay, so. for the features, um, you can just take little bits of clay, you can roll them around and start to mould them into different shapes. So I'm going to do some eyes. I'm going to make them quite pointy. Squish it down with your hands. And then I'm going to use the pencil to make some reptilian-like pupils in the eyes. And do this for all your features. Okay, so now I've made all of the features. I've squished out two little dots for the nose and a little worm for the mouth and two little fangs. I stick it all together, we use the fork again and just score the back of all the features. And with the fangs we're going to add those to the mouth, so score the top of those, score under there them together, give it a little wriggle, do the same with the other one, and smooth them with your fingers, then get your pot, and you can Use the fork to score where you're going to put your features, but don't worry if it's it goes over because you can use your fingers to smooth the scores away on the bits that aren't needed. I'm just going to do it where the eyes would be, a bit where the nose would be, and the mouth as well. I'm going to place them on and gently press. And smooth it all again with your fingers and anywhere where the scoring is you can start to use your finger or you can use the pencil and just go around smoothing it out under the eyes around the eyes like that and use your thumb just press it down a little bit more just keep pressing the features in. And support the clay from the back as well with a finger. <clears throat> and 
Might want to use the pencil again. Just to make the features. Put a couple of nostrils in. Around the eyes. And just keep pressing gently. Now his features are on. I'm going to give him some scales. So I need a pencil. I'm going to draw kind of U shapes all the way around like this. And then the next so once I've gone all the way around, the next layer is going to be joining up the bottom of the U's so it's not, it's kind of one along, so that creates more of a scale like effect. And I'm just going to do that around the whole pot. Okay, so I've done the scales all around the pot. And now I'm just going to finish off the lid. I've let it dry a little bit, so it's still a little bit flexible, but it's firmer than it was. And it's sit on top there like that. And what I've made for the lid is a kind of shark's fin kind of shape. And I'm just going to score it. And stick it on. Just give it a gentle wriggle. Give it smooth. And just shape it. Push it down gently, just do that for a little bit, and just use your finger to smooth along the edges, and that should begin to stick when you're happy that you feel like it's joined enough. I've moved that to the side, maybe use another bit of newspaper, and let it dry, and let both the pot and lid dry separately, but I'll just show you. Together he's got this, this shark's fin hairdo here and let that dry out for a day or two until the clay has gone very light. Okay so once your pot's been drying for a couple of days it should go a light grey colour and be bone dry and that means it's ready to start painting. Uh, if you grab your paint sticks um, you can have a look at the colours and choose one. I'm going to choose this blue for the scales of my sea monster and I'm just going to start applying the paint from the stick. Just all over the body of the sea monster. And what I've found helpful is if you have a, a brush it helps smooth out the paint because it can be quite lumpy and just makes that paint go a little bit further and you can also get into some of the other areas of your pot that might be hard to get to with the with the stick itself so you can keep working like that and just adding bits of paint around and working it with the brush as well and I'm going to do a different colour on the inside of my pot and some striking contrasting colours for the features. I'm going to crack on with that and I'll show you the finished result. 